There is a huge problem with mutual funds, and for some reason, nobody seems to be talking about this. The problem is so bad that it's causing 71% of Americans to lose billions of dollars each year in investment returns. This is billions of dollars that should be going into the pockets of Americans, but instead is going into the pockets of big mutual funds and their Ivy League fund managers. So. What exactly is the problem? We'll talk about that. And we'll also talk about the solution to the problem because it's actually a very simple solution that's gonna give you significantly higher investment returns, but it's also gonna put a lot more money back into your pockets over the long term. So what exactly is the problem? Well, the problem is that if you're investing your money with a mutual fund, then there's no other way to put this, but you're being robbed. You might think that you're getting the highest returns with your mutual fund. You might think that your mutual fund actually cares about you and, and your best interest, but unfortunately that's not the case. So David Swinson is an investor who famously turned $1 billion into $25.4 billion, and he's been quoted for saying, overwhelmingly, mutual funds extract enormous sums from investors in exchange for providing a shocking disservice. So what exactly is David saying here? Well, he's saying that because mutual funds are actively traded, meaning that their goal is to outperform the market, right? So for example, if the S&P 500 is giving a 10% return on average each year, then your mutual fund that, that you're investing your money into should be giving you a better return than that. And if they're not, then it means that they are providing you with a disservice because it means that you're paying money to get lower returns. And that actually brings us to the first real problem here, okay? And it's that mutual funds are just absurdly expensive. Forbes published an article a few years ago called How Much Do Mutual Funds Really Cost? The article basically just goes through and it breaks down the costs associated with owning a mutual fund. And it looks beyond things like the expense ratio, which is what the mutual fund tells you that you're gonna be paying. But unfortunately, that's not the full truth. There's more costs associated with owning a mutual mutual fund. So the first cost is known as the disclosed cost. So this cost right here is also known as the expense ratio. It's the cost that the mutual fund tells you about upfront so that you can know what you're going to be paying each year in expenses. Forbes estimates that the average expense ratio of a mutual fund sits around 1.19%. So the second cost is known as the hidden cost and it's hidden because you don't know about it and they don't tell you about it. And it's basically the cost that they incur from trading all of the securities, right? So when you buy and sell stocks, you have to pay a commission and they basically just pass that along to investors. The average hidden cost of a mutual fund sits at about 1.44%. That amount is in addition to the disclosed cost, the expense ratio. It's not like you're just paying the expense ratio and then the hidden costs are factored into that. These are two separate costs that you have to pay for. And so we're going to combine these two to make a total. The next cost is known as cost from tax inefficiency. And so basically what this means is, let's say for example, um, a mutual fund buys a stock for $10. Okay. Six months later, that stock is now worth $20, which means there's a $10 gain that the mutual fund has to pay a capital gains tax on. Now, let's say, for example, that you joined the mutual fund six months after that stock appreciated in value. You didn't actually benefit from the stock increasing in value because you joined six months after it had already increased. But the real problem is that you're still going to be responsible for paying the capital gains tax that you didn't even benefit from. So even if you lose money, for example, let's say you bought into the mutual fund six months after they bought this stock and that $20 stock then goes down to $15. Well, you just lost money. But guess what? You're still going to have to pay taxes on that $10 that the mutual fund earned from buying the stock six months prior to you joining. I have zero clue why that's okay or how that's even legal, but that's just how it is. Morningstar estimates that the average cost of tax inefficiency within a mutual fund sits at about 1.1%. That's in addition to the two prior expenses that you have to pay as well. Now, if we combine all three of those percentages into one percentage, it means that you're going to be paying 3.73% in fees every single year by owning a mutual fund. That is 93% higher than like the cost of a low cost ETF or index fund from Vanguard or Fidelity. The reason that this is so important is because excessive fees can absolutely destroy your long-term investing goals. So let's just assume that on average, you're paying a mutual fund 3.73% each year worth of fees. And then let's just say that hypothetically, the mutual fund is giving you a 7% return each year. That means that after fees, you're actually only getting a 3.27% return. Now, remember you are putting putting up 100% of the money. You're taking 100% of the risk by putting your money into the stock market and you're only getting 50% of the return. That doesn't seem right to me. You're, you're giving up 50% of your return just to line the pockets of a fund manager who doesn't have any care in the world about you and about your family and about your personal well-being in the future. You may think that paying 3.73% each year in fees is not a lot of money, but let's really put this into perspective, okay? Imagine if you and a friend went to, I don't know, Starbucks. Your friend buys a coffee for $40 but you buy that same coffee 
for $373. That's 92 times the amount that she's paying. Would any rational person pay $373 for a cup of coffee at Starbucks? I don't know. I wouldn't. I know you probably wouldn't either. That's how much more money you're paying by investing your money with a mutual fund. Just in case you think I'm being a little bit extreme with that example, then let me give you a real example with real numbers and real figures. Let's take a look at two people. You've got Bob and then Joe. Both are 35 and they both save $100,000 that they plan on investing. So let's say over the next 30 years that they both get an 8% return each year in the stock market. Now, the difference is that Joe is investing with the mutual fund and his mutual fund is costing him 3.73% in fees every single year. And then next up, we've got Bob, who's investing with a low cost index fund that's only costing him 0.04% each year. By the time they both turn 65, Joe will have an ending balance of $374,531. But Joe paid roughly $631,733 worth of fees. On the other hand, Bob, who is now a happy camper because he chose to invest with a low cost index fund and his balance is sitting at $995,144 and Bob only paid $11,120 worth of fees. Now, if that still does not convince you that mutual funds are terrible investments, then I honestly don't know what else to say. Some people might argue with me and they might say, well, Joshua, you're paying more because you're getting much higher returns. Well, let's let's talk about that. Let's take a look at this claim here. Research affiliates and investment research firm studied 203 mutual funds with at least $100 million in assets for 15 years. What they discovered was that 96% of these mutual funds were not able to outperform the S&P 500, which means that millions of investors were overpaying for underperformance. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Well, Joshua, then I'll just go and I'll find the, the best mutual fund that gives me the highest return, right? Well, unfortunately, it's not that easy because of a known practice called window dressing. Mutual funds will often engage in some pretty sneaky and questionable behavior. So for example, prior to reporting their quarterly holdings, a lot of mutual funds will often sell off their losers or their investments that are performing poorly to hide the fact that they ever even own these investments. They'll then go and buy securities that have gone up in value to make it look like they've owned these the entire time. And then of course they can use this for marketing purposes by tricking investors into thinking that their mutual fund is performing a lot better than what it actually is because of these inflated numbers. Okay, so we've addressed the fact that this is a huge problem. The next step would be to determine what the solution is. The solution is actually very simple. So instead of investing your money with a underperforming expensive mutual fund, instead invest your money with a low cost and high performing index fund or ETF. Generally speaking, the main difference is that mutual funds are actively managed. That means that there's some type of fund manager or like a team of people who are working on a daily basis to make trades for the mutual fund, to move investments around, to try and make higher returns for the mutual fund. In most cases, they don't. In fact, 96% of the time, they don't outperform the S&P 500, but they try to, okay? Now, ETFs and index funds are passively managed. That means there is no fund manager who's working in the fund on a day-to-day -day basis, making investments, changing things around. Essentially, the fund is on autopilot and the fund manager does not have his hands in the fund on a day-to-day -day basis. Instead, the fund manager will buy securities to match a specific benchmark or index and then just leave it alone. Let's say, for example, that you were to buy a share of an S&P 500 ETF. That ETF is designed to track the performance of the S&P 500 index as closely as possible. And in most cases, it does a really good job of doing that. In fact, it does such a good job that Warren Buffett himself has suggested that most investors should invest their money with some type of S&P 500 index fund or ETF. So that is the solution. Now, if you already have your money in a mutual fund and you need to move it from your mutual fund to some type of index fund or ETF, I've got videos on this channel where I talk about the best ETFs or index funds. I'll link those down below in the description. You can go check those out. Hey, if you made it this far and you have not liked the video, do me a massive favor and drop a like down below. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already, but you like content like this, I would appreciate your support so much. And for those of you, my friends who have stayed till the end, you know exactly who you are. I appreciate your support so much as always, and I will see you again very soon. Take care. So David Swenson is a famous investor who turned $1 billion into $25.4 I think that's the number. Yeah. David Swenson is a famous investor who turned $1 billion into $25.4 Why is that so funny to me?